Those people who think somehow that Safe Carmen shouldn't be talking about Bruce Lee, I want to be clear on this. Safe Carmen was training. I was I was young. I was young, but I was training when Bruce Lee was alive. Okay, I was training when Bruce Lee was alive. Now, I was 12 years old when he died. But those people who somehow think because they met Linda Lee, or they trained with Jerry Poteet, or they trained with Damien Asato, that they know more than I know, well, you don't. You don't. You do not know more than I know. Next. On who's a martial artist, and maybe I've hurt people's feelings, I want to say this. I want to say this, and I want to be clear. I'm going to show you some images, okay? And this is for those people who think somehow I have overstepped my bounds when I have said that they didn't know what a fighter is. Sometimes, because of my religion, and I'm very serious about it, even though I get bent out of shape with some of the stupidity um, that I hear, and I hear a great deal, uh, I say some things that, for me, makes me cringe. You know, when I look at my videos, sometimes it makes me cringe. Because it is unbecoming a Muslim, and I'm very serious about my religion. Now, that being said, there are ways I behave that I don't really like when I get irritated. There are also things I don't like to do. And one of those things that I don't like to do is talk about my own accomplishments. Talking about my own history in the martial arts. I generally don't. But in order to make things clear to people who somehow think that they know more than I know, I'm going to talk about maybe my mentors. I'm going to talk about some of my peers. I'm going to show you some, just some pictures. That's it. And quickly, and then I'll go back, and then I'll go into the body of this video. Okay? These particular images I'm going to show you uh, is from a full contact bare knuckle tournament. Full contact bare knuckle. Everything goes. No protective gear, nothing. You could punch through the groin, the whole shebang. I think the only thing is you could not uh, attack the eyes, okay? But groin attacks, all that was legal. Now, the gentleman in the white with his leg up, okay? Here we go. Gentleman throwing a punch with his leg up. That's a man by the name of Earl Thompson. Okay, better known by many people as Earl Brown, one of the best boxing referees. Have have box have a referee Bernard Hopkins matches, has refereed um, Floyd Mayweather matches. Earl Brown, you look up Earl Brown, you'll see some of the boxing matches that he has refereed. But he was one of the greatest karate fighters, full contact, bare knuckle karate fighters to come out of uh, come out of the East Coast. Actually one of the pioneers of full contact karate in America, period. That is a gentleman right there who I had the honor of learning from on several occasions he would come to my hometown and teach a very small group of us we were very young and teach a very small group of us he traveled to to teach okay the next picture is of a Fred Miller and this is a gentleman who I did not have the pleasure of training with but I did see him fight in his prime he's also fighting in that full contact bare knuckle tournament he's a gentleman on top raining punches down The next picture is a picture that I want to show you of a man by the name of Happy Robot Crump. Happy Robot Crump is someone who was from, who was taught by one of my two karate teachers. I've, I've only had two um, that I really acknowledge a great deal. It had a great deal of influence on me. The next gentleman is in the white pants. Uh, he's the one is in the white pants. He's fighting a kung fu fighter by the name of Tiari Cassell, who's in the black pants. The, the gentleman in the white gi pants is Happy Robot Crump. Um, I did not know him in his prime, but I did meet him uh, and have interaction with him right before um, his death, not too long before his death. Uh, and um, that was a, another great honor of mine. The man in the white, a uh, lightweight champion of that full contact bare knuckle tournament, Happy Robot Crump. By the way, he's taking a full power punch 
to the face. You can see the kind of pain he's in, but he ultimately won the lightweight, um, the lightweight division. Okay, the next picture that I want to show you, next image is of a man. I consider him to be my mentor, the gentleman in the white gi pants. Uh, I won't mention his name. I don't know if he really wants me to mention his name, but he's in the white gi pants. He won the middleweight title in that same full contact, bare knuckle, everything goes tournament in Harlem, 1975. And um, here he is in the white gi pants. Now, I want to pause here before I show you the last, the, the last image. That particular gentleman that was a full contact bare knuckle champion is responsible for me teaching. That's right. That man is responsible for me teaching. He's the one that told me when we were training together privately on a kata, on a karate kata, he told me, he asked me, he said, are you teaching? And before I could say no, he said, you have to teach. You have to teach. One of the greatest full contact bare knuckle fighters born on American soil. One of the seven pioneers of full contact bare knuckle is the reason why I opened up the UMA fight camp. Okay? In the heart of the ghetto. Okay? The last image I want to show you is of a female karate fighter who at one point in one year when added up how many average fights she would have in a tournament it was calculated that she was 83 and 1. The one person she lost to in that particular year 1971 to be exact she came back and beat her twice. Here's the image of that female. That female, you will notice, is fighting without any gear, any safety gear on her head, no safety gear on her hands. I don't know if you can tell, but there's no safety gear on her feet. Okay? That's my wife. I pause for effect. That's my wife. Okay? What am I saying here? What I am saying is that Safe Carmen's wife is tougher than Joe Rogan. So if I hurt anyone's feelings by saying we don't know what they're talking about, when they say Bruce Lee was not a fighter, if I hurt any of your feelings, so what? So what? Okay? None of you, none of you have the qualifications I have and certainly don't have the qualifications my teachers have, my mentors have, or the people around me have. Okay? No matter what you may think you've accomplished, I or my mentors or people around me have accomplished more. So the only thing you can do on this channel, my critics, the only thing you can do on this channel is learn. You can't do anything else. Because I come from an era where we fought with these. Karate was with this. Boxing was with that. Anything short of that, you're not qualified. Okay? To my subscribers, welcome. But I'm doing this also for my subscribers because many times my subscribers will say something I said and they say that they get feedback or they get pushback. Well, this is for them too because now they can show this video to people who have an issue with some of the things I've said. I am more than qualified to say that Bruce Lee was a fighter because I know what fighters look like. Now. Let's get into the Dao Jeet Kune Do. We're going to move fast because I spent so much time talking about um, some of my mentors and talking about myself to just try to make, make a point that needed to be made. Let's look at Dao Jeet Kune Do because we're going to look at Dao Jeet Kune Do, then we're going to look at Contact, and then in 24 hours I'll break down some of the things that Bruce Lee did, and that will be the last, uh, last video, okay? So here we go. Dao Jeet Kune Do. First of all, actors are not writing books that set the world on fire. Okay? For those people who say that Bruce was an actor, and that's all he was, actors do not write books that set the world on fire. The Dao Ujikundo was taken for granted today. 
The fact of the matter is that Bruce Lee said things at that particular time. When he wrote that book, Dao Jacundo, when he uh, 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 drew out those figures, those figures throwing particular punches or particular kicks, when he did that, he set the martial arts world on fire. He challenged the martial arts. Now, how did he challenge the martial arts? Um, I'm not going to make this video any longer than it needs to be made. But how did he challenge the martial arts? And not just karate. How? The right lead. The right lead by itself. Nothing that Bruce Lee did, in my opinion, had more of an impact on the martial arts and was more of a challenge to martial artists than him talking about the right lead. Why? Many people don't understand that he wasn't saying put the lead in front. He wasn't saying put the right, the right hand in front. What Bruce was saying was whatever is your power hand, put that in front. So if you're a natural left-hander, right, put that hand in front. Okay, he wasn't specifically talking about right lead. What he was saying was lead with your power hand. That, right now, many people look and they say, okay, okay, I get it. At the time, he said that that was the best way to fight. People, some people were outraged. Some people were just confused. I don't think anything had been said by anybody up until that time that was more controversial than Bruce saying, stop carrying your power in the back. Now, there will be, I'll wrap this up as far as the Dao Jikundo, but I want to make this point before I move on to the, the issue of contact, okay? Because I look at that, I, have no, I know about contact from a personal, from personal experience and what that does to people. And that's one of the main things that most people don't understand about Bruce Lee. All right. And particularly these people who say he wasn't a fighter. And, he, and some of my critics, you know, some of these, these sheer cowards who, who still, I will tell you, I want to tell all of my subscribers. When you see people comment, I want you to know. When you see people comment, don't be impressed. When you see people comment and they criticize me, I'm talking to my loyal subscribers. Don't be impressed by them because I, Safe Carmen, I go to their channels and they have nothing on their channel. They have nothing on their channel. Okay? And on the rare occasions that a critic of mine will have something on, on, on their channel, their technique is garbage. It's garbage. So I want you to understand this. Now, back to this idea of, of the lead, carrying your power up front. Many people think that he challenged traditional karate. No. No. He challenged traditional karate, but he challenged traditional boxing. That's right. What are you saying, Safe? I'm saying he challenged any traditional martial art that felt the best way to fight was to put your power in the back. Now, boxing, what is it? It's pretty much standard. It's pretty much standard to keep your power hand in the back. He criticized every single martial art that fought with their power in the back. And that included boxing, which puts their weak hand up front. So it wasn't just karate that was like, Wow, you know, was was this guy saying? No, it was boxers that had to say, Wow, what is this guy saying? Because really the only martial art that led with its power hand deliberately, and I'm not saying some boxers didn't do it. I'm not saying some karate fighters didn't do it. I'm not saying some kickboxers didn't do it. What I am saying is generally the traditional way taught in karate, but in boxing. And in movie time, and in American or PK style kickboxing, in virtually every martial art, it was taught. It was taught that you put your power in the back, and Bruce said no. The only, I happen to know, because I've trained in six different martial arts, that pretty much the only martial art that by default had their power up front was wrestling. Wrestlers, we always wrestle power side forward. 
We wrestle power side forward. Wrestlers wrestle power side forward generally. If they change at all, they change when they go into MMA. They learn to grab or they learn to uh, have their weak side in front. But generally, and even then, this kind of advanced for many people, but even then, wrestlers will generally fight southpaw. Most people don't know why they even fight southpaw in MMA. They think they're natural southpaws. No, many people who have a wrestling base, a strong wrestling base, will learn to box southpaw so they can have their power hand forward like they did when they were wrestling. It makes it easier for to, uh, to get takedowns. But that's a little advance. I'll move on. But Bruce did not only challenge karate when he said carry your power front, but he challenged any martial art other than wrestling because every other martial art other than wrestling carried their power in the back. Now, why did he do that? Why did he do that? Simplicity. No actor's talking like that. No actor is doing what Bruce Lee did. No actor is setting the martial arts world on fire. They may make a movie, but they're not offering the martial arts world anything they have not done or have not heard before. And Bruce was doing it. And Bruce Lee was doing it. Okay? He was doing it. Now, why did he say carry your power up front? Most people, again, don't know it. Don't know it. You can meet Jerry Pote, you can talk to Linda Lee, you can talk to this one, you can talk to that one. Man, I was fighting, I was sparring, I was training when Bruce Lee was alive. I know why he said carry your power up front. Because first and foremost, the Kundo is a self-defense method. It is for self-defense. And it is a simplistic template, simplistic template of self-defense. In simplest terms... What should you be doing? You should have the limb that is closest to your opponent be the most powerful one. Or the limb closest to your assailant should be the most powerful one. Your most powerful leg should be in front for power kicking. Your most powerful hand should be in front for that preemptive punch, that preemptive strike. You may have to punch that person first. You should have your power up front to get a jump on them. If your first punch, if you have to throw the first punch, let it be your hardest punch. Okay? Your power should be up front. Bruce Lee said carry your power up front because it is one of the best um, bylaws of self-defense and of self-protection to have your power closest to the target. Okay? And it wasn't only karate that had to change if they really wanted to get with, with what he was doing. But it was boxing that had to change if they wanted to get with what he was doing. It was kickboxing that had to change if they wanted to get to what he was doing. If they really wanted to understand really what self-defense should work like, what it should look like, what roles should be part and parcel of a good self-defense system. And one of, the, one of those roles is that generally, generally speaking, in the name of, of, of simplicity, your power hand, your power limb should be the closest limbs to the assailant. To the assailant. Okay? There is no actor thinking like that. No actor is thinking like that. You may say, oh, Michael Job White kicks this and kicks that. Yes, nice. But Michael Job White is not saying anything that we martial, arts don't, martial artists don't know. Good, you know, fast. Oh, good. But where did he learn it? He learned it from Kyokushin. I trained in Kyokushin. Right? He learned it from karate. I trained in karate. Right? Michael Jai White is doing things that impress you people. He's not doing anything that imp impresses me. He's not doing anything that impress impresses my mentors. He's not doing anything that impresses my peers. He's impressing you. But Bruce Lee impressed everybody who saw him. Bruce Lee impressed everybody who was training differently when he said, wait a minute, you're doing it wrong. On the issue of contact, and I'll finish this video up. One reason why I laugh when people talk to me, they come into my forums and they talk about what they did, and even my wife looks and laughs, my friends look and laugh, is because I'm a contact man. My generation was contact. What does that mean? Even when sparring, 
even when sparring, karate or sparring, boxing, full contact to the body, light contact to the head, no protective equipment. That's, that's my genre. That's where I come from. That's the way I was taught. That's what my teacher taught. That's how my friends boxed or, or sparred karate. Okay? That's where I come from. That's, that's me. Right? That's me. So I know about contact. And that's why I can relate to Bruce. And I'm going to finish this video talking about contact. When I had my martial arts school, I opened it up. I opened the Uma Fight Camp in the hood. Dead in the hood. Right in the hood. Right? Where most of the people criticized me wouldn't even go. Okay? Now, there used to be a barbershop right across the street from my school. Right across the street. Okay? On any given day. Well, not any given day, but let's say Friday night. Friday night, 6 o'clock, it would be easy to find 20, 30 black guys. Right? Tattoos, dreads, sagging, teardrops. Looking in the window of my martial arts school. Right? 20, 30 guys. Any Friday night. Especially in the summer. At the very top. At the very top of... Of a, my student body, I had a total of nine students. That would be a full class for me. Nine students. That was a full class for me in the heart of the hood with gang members, with people, black dudes and muscles and dreads and sagging and teardrops and tattoos, talking buku trash to people, right? At the very top of my student body, the most people I've had in my school, in spite of being around all these roughnecks, in spite of being in the, in the heart of the hood, I had nine students. That was a big class. Sometimes I would only have four students. You know why? Contact. Contact. Now keep in mind why I have this school. Who's the only instructor? Me, Safe Carmen, five foot seven, hundred eighty-five pounds, soaking wet. Five seven hundred eighty five pounds. People were scared to come to my school. People were scared to come into my school. Okay. Because we put the hands on you. The hands is on you. And me, little old me. My wife always laughs. She says, "You're not little. You're just short." You know, I'm almost two hundred pounds. I can carry two hundred pounds and great cardio so I'm not little I just joke with that but still five seven almost 200 pounds right people were scared people were scared and I was open for seven years seven years right why because all these tough black dudes didn't want didn't want no contact don't want no contact right and in the beginning, they had gloves. We would drill. We would drill. I've, I've never, ever, my students will tell you, and I will interview my students, I, I will be interviewing uh, at least two of my students uh, soon, okay? Soon, God willing. And they will tell you, excuse me, indigestion, drinking too fast, they will tell you, I was very careful that nobody got hurt. But eventually, you got to put on the gloves, man. Because it's how we worked. I taught people first with gloves, then with MMA gloves, and then bare knuckle. Because ultimately, I ran a bare knuckle establishment. Okay, my critics, I ran a bare knuckle establishment. Right? Seven years. Nothing fake about me, baby. Nothing fake about me. In the heart of the hood, black dudes was afraid to come into my school because it was contact. And the chief instructor was five foot seven, 185 pounds. Okay? All right? Fear in that school. And that's what we need to understand about Bruce Lee. When Bruce Lee started talking about contact, people thought he was crazy. Do you people know that about Bruce? Actor doesn't do that, man. An actor does not put the fear of people and does not put fear in people like Bruce did.
Bruce Lee would go around and have man and have manufactured equipment for him. Bruce would have equipment manufactured for him so he could train and fight harder. He would have equipment made for him because it was not the kind of equipment he needed in, in, in existence for that kind of training. Okay? Chuck Norris and Joe Lewis, yeah, they, they fought and they would hit each other, but it wasn't deliberate contact. This was before Joe Lewis started kickboxing. Okay? Bruce was known for hard sparring. So many of you talking about fighting tournaments, let me tell you something. Bruce Lee would have won tournaments had he fought them. He would have won them easily because everybody who was a champion who sparred with him said how good he was. Okay? And when I finish, when I do the, na the last video, I'm going to give you a quote of a man from the East Coast that most of you don't know. And I'm going to tell you what he said about Bruce Lee, but I'm going to wrap this up with the issue of contact. Bruce Lee was known for sparring hard and going out of his way to buy and have safety equipment manufactured so he could train in the most authentic manner at a time when people were afraid to spar on the level that he was sparring. You understand me? You people have no idea. And how do I know? Because I was training before he died. I know what he was doing. I don't have to read about him. I know what that man was doing. Now, I have said in previous videos, do I think he could have beaten everybody? No. At the end of the day, there were still people who think he could have beat maybe Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, or he would have beat John Jones. No, he wouldn't have. The Rock is just as capable of biting Bruce as Bruce would be of biting him. The Rock is capable of doing everything that Bruce can do. You don't have to need, you don't have to use good technique to kick somebody in the nuts. It doesn't take technique necessarily to kick somebody in the nuts. Somebody as big as Rock, as big as The Rock, or somebody as big as John Jones would likely beat Bruce Lee. However, subjective, pound for pound, as a fighter, no question, no actor would ever have the knowledge or, us, or, or has ever had the knowledge, nor have many martial artists had the knowledge to set the world on fire by writing a book like Bruce did to Dao Jikundo, with the Dao Jikundo. And the idea of sparring contact, man, the idea of saying if you are not hitting each other hard, you're not training. Nobody was saying that when Bruce was saying that. People were running from that man. Okay? Running from that man. Okay? Jackie Chan and Jet Lee, they are not sparring like that. And I got news for you. Michael Jai White moves around with people. Michael Jai White is not sparring. Hard like Bruce Lee. Bruce had people come into his house. Good fighters come into his house and sparring to the knockout in the backyard with him. Five foot seven, 145 pounds, man. Okay? People talking about what he ain't, they don't know nothing about that. You don't know nothing about that. Bruce Lee was making people run scared when he came out. He was making people rethink whether or not they were good fighters. He was making people leave their martial art because he was proving to them through sparring that what they thought they were, they were not. And no actor does that. My name is Safe Carmen. Video was a little longer than I had expected, but um, the last video, I think that would be number four, will be posted in 24 hours. I'll be looking at some... Uh, Things that Bruce Lee did that no actor, in fact, no mediocre fighter could do. And I'll be picking it apart um, in a way that um, most people haven't in the past. Okay, see you next video.